We're back at Building Science Summer Camp. One of my old science summer camp friends, Wynn White. Wynn, how are you today? I'm great. How about you, Matt? I'm doing fantastic. We had a great uh, day of training today, and it was right up your alley. We talked a ton about moisture and mold. And if you don't know Wynn, Wynn is in Baton Rouge. He's an engineer. Um, he deals in all kinds of different remediation. Um, but I think your main business is probably lead, asbestos, and mold. Is that right? Yeah, 50% asbestos, uh, probably 10% mold, and then the rest is uh, uh, construction defects and consulting. Got it. Um, and I, the cool part about about uh, your business too, and I didn't realize your son was a was a uh, engineer too. It's been really fun to meet Chris too. Yeah, he's uh, a great young man. Of course, he's not all that young anymore, and I <laughs> guess that means I'm getting to be old. But he's a professional engineer just as I am, and uh, so he's learned from the ground up uh, how to deal with all these issues. That's awesome. Hey, when in today's presentations that they were talking about mold, I was flashing back uh, to a couple of recent interviews I've had with clients. They that have asked me very specifically, Matt, I've got a real bad mold sensitivity and I want to build a house that is mold free from the start and stays that way. And it's interesting, in the last probably two months, I've had two clients that that's the very first thing that came out of their mouth. As you think about that as an engineer and you've dealt with a lot of remediation, what are the couple of first couple things that come into your mind? Well, first thing is there's no such thing as zero mold. Now, the key is because there's mold everywhere is we don't want it growing in the house and so uh, yes it does help to use materials that won't support the uh, growth of mold but again if you have a water problem mm -hmm. you're going to have indoor air quality problems maybe not mold growth but it's going to be musty damp yep. nasty and so the the key is get it dry clean up any mess that you have and keep it dry yeah for sure and if you're building new, let's say, as I'm talking to these clients in Austin, what are some things that are that are key for building new and thinking about a mold-free house? Well, and, and f let me kick start off by saying, you know, it rains when you're building the house. Yeah. But as long as you let the structure dry, it, it doesn't hurt it. So you don't have to be paranoid about building a tent over the house while you're building the house. Yeah. So let's not worry about that. Now the set, next step is when you build it and you get to the uh, enclosure uh, or the outside, the cladding of the system, uh, you can build a perfect wall in a lot of aspects, but you punch holes in it. We call them windows and doors, yeah. and then you have all the utility uh, entrances. You need to flash those properly, key them into the water uh, uh, shield so that the water comes out. So, and remember this, let's say brick veneer. I love brick veneer. But it, brick, if you take a garden hose and spray water on it, in less than one minute, there will be free water running down the backside of the brick. That's right. So the key is to catch that water at the bottom or at the head of windows or your penetrations and flash it to the outside. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you're going to have a, a structure that will last forever. Yeah, I totally agree. When, what do you think about using alternate building materials for somebody who's interested in doing this? You know, what do you think about, let's say, uh, concrete walls or insulated concrete forms or, you know, going to non paper face drywall, things like that? Well, I love reinforced concrete. I'm an engineer. So, uh, you know, my color palette is black, white, and battleship gray. So, uh, <laughs> concrete's kind of in that gray category. Yeah, so. But uh, uh, really, the new materials, uh, non paper face gypsum board is, is a good material. But again, if you get it wet and keep it wet, the water's going to run to the bottom of it. Right. It's going to sit there where it's going to cause you problems if you don't shed it out. Yeah. So, you mentioned several different products that are great. Uh, if they're done correctly, they all work super. Yeah, I think that's the key, and that's really what we talked about today and the research that they were talking about with mold in particular. The big takeaway for me, if I could boil down eight hours of their presentations, was when you build a structure, keep it dry, because no matter what building material you've got in there, if it gets wet, it's going to be a problem. Exactly, and it, it, to me, it doesn't matter what kind of mold you're growing indoors. If it's growing inside, it ain't good. Yeah. So let's keep it from growing, and so y you don't need to know which species of mold is growing inside. You got to clean it up. Yep. Now, having said that, if you're allergic to a particular kind of mold, it's important that you not be around that that kind of mold. Right. But it, but that's pretty hard. I mean, if you go outside, you know, mold is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the key is don't grow it inside. Yeah. 
Any specific design advice you might give somebody who's interested in doing that? You know, would you favor a one-story versus a two-story house, a slab versus a crawl space, any of those kinds of things? No, I, you know, I do like slabs, but uh, as far as single story, two story, I would recommend that you bring the ductwork inside the uh, thermal envelope or inside the uh, insulation. And if you do that in a crawl space, then I like, think of a crawl space as a mini basement. Mm -hmm. Pour a slab, vapor barrier everywhere, drain water around the structure. Yep. Uh, if you have to have a sump pump, that ain't a good sign, but yep. uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do and then have dehumidification. So uh, I'm a, your climate's much like mine. Yep. I like to have a positive pressure structure, mm -hmm. so you have to blow more air into it than yep. you suck out of it and you need to dry that air out. And then, of course, that was the last uh, presentation today, which was right up uh, that alley. Yeah, we were talking about lazy ACs in the last presentation, but the whole point of the presentation was basically, look, you know, your air conditioner is only pulling moisture out of there when it's running, and it's got to run for at least 30 minutes before it starts pulling moisture out of the air. So why not be smart and have a dehumidifier separate? And we've been doing that for probably seven, eight years now in Austin. Well, he, and the, one of the keys that he made was, and you can buy a magic box, I call it, that has all that equipment in one thing. But you call Larry, the uh, air conditioning guy, to come out and work on it, and he has no chance to get it operating properly. Yeah. So why not, if you have an air conditioner, he knows how to work on that. If you have a dehumidifier, he knows how to work on that. Right. So it's a slam dunk. Yes, it costs a little bit more money, maybe, but uh, your energy bill is going to be different. It's going to be less, and it's going to work. That's the best part. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, Joe made a really good point at the end. He was talking about uh, mechanical systems in our houses, and his point was don't get a magic box that does everything. Use a HVAC system that has a thermostat to control temperature, that has a dehumidistat, to control your dehumidifier, and then it has a vent stat, or whatever you want to call it, for ventilation that, again, is also separate from those. So you can control all three of those separately. I thought that was really interesting. Um, last question for you, Wynn. Tell me about um, filtration in houses, whether people need UV lights, or depending on, on their sensitivities. What's your thoughts on that? Well, several years ago, I did an article that was published in the Indoor Environment Connections magazine on UV light. It does work in certain situations. It's great if you shine it on the coil, mm -hmm. but you would have to have a bank. Think of the, the kill zone. How long does the mold spore have to be inside the UV light? Uh, that's a great question. So if you shine it on the coil, it'll keep the mold from growing on the coil and, in, and improve the efficiency of your coil. Filtration, you know, the fact is most dust is heavier than air. It's going to end up on your floor, not back at the filter on your air conditioner. So keep your house clean. I do recommend buying vacuum cleaners with a HEPA vacuum on it, because if you don't, you're just sucking the dust up from this corner of the room and blowing it to the other side of the room. Yeah, that's right. So do that, and cleanliness is next to godliness, so keep the place clean and dry. Yeah. And you know, uh, I haven't installed them recently, but I used to install a bunch of central vac systems that were piped to the outside. Seems like that would be a great fit too for somebody who's really has allergies and mold issues, because now there's no chance of a bypass on an HVAC or on a uh, uh, HEPA filter, it's gonna blow to the outside. I, I don't disagree with that, but I would one caution would be if you're sucking out 30 CFM of air, you need to supply or make up that 30 CFM with good dry air because if you're sucking warm, humid air in and it's 70 degrees on the thermostat inside, you're going to have condensation yeah. and then mold. And then you got other problems happening. Exactly. Hey, Wynn, how can people get a hold of you if they're interested in learning more about you and your company? Well, you can Google Wynn White, that's W-Y-N-N-W-H-I-T-E in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, my phone number, though, is 225-761-9141. Wynn, thanks for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, I think this topic of mold and indoor air quality doesn't seem to go away. You know, you and I both lived through the mold crisis of 2001, and here we are, you know, 15 years later, we're still talking about it. It's still a hot topic at, at the Building Science Forums, and we still have clients that come to us and say that's their number one issue. So I, I think this topic is going to be one that we're going to keep talking about for many years to come. Well, as I tell him, Mike Bowden, he's an attorney. He's been coming to summer camp for quite some time. But until we learn, or wait a minute, until the attorneys 
train us on how to prevent these problems, we're going to continue talking about it. Yeah, I totally agree. Thanks, Wynn. I really appreciate you being on my blog with me. We'll see you next time. Thanks, man. I enjoyed it.